tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, Z Nation fans. Welcome to another edition of the After Buzz Recap Show. Tonight we are covering episode 12, Murphy's Law. How are you guys doing tonight? Excellent. How are you doing? Good. Wow, no one's ever <laughs> asked me that. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, I'm doing great. And you know, on this show, just whatever happens will happen. <laughs> Just like Murphy's Law. <laughs> Anything that can happen will happen, mm -hmm. exactly. Joining me on the panel tonight, Zach Wilson. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Representing for Team Survival. Yes, Woo. I am the last <laughs> remaining member of Team Survival. No, Roy is still alive somewhere. Yeah, can't join she's, us this She's week. disappeared like Mac and Addie. <laughs> we think she might be alive. Do you think we'll ever see her and Katie again? <laughs> My head says no, but my heart oh, wow. says no. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. You were quoting right from the episode. My gosh. Yes. And joining us as our very, very special guest tonight, Pisay oh, Pow. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. AKA Cassandra for all yes. you Z Nation fans. Mm -hmm. And I'm your host, Megan Salinas. Again, we mentioned Roya Tahiri at... Oh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Fanfare! Roya Tahiri and Katie Kellen can't be here tonight um, because of the holidays, but... We are, they are with us in spirit. They are in our hearts. Maybe not Zach's heart, but in our hearts. There's only room for the people that are present on Team Survival. <laughs> You're like a cat. If they're not here, you know object he's a real, permanence. He's a real team player here, isn't he? That's well, part of being Team Survival, me, actually. Roya, who's like normally here with us, me and her decided that we are Team Survival. Like we would do, if in the zombie apocalypse, we would do whatever it took, whether that meant resorting to cannibalism, whether that meant resorting to... <laughs> You might want to scoot yeah, away. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we just we do what it takes. Like you gotta survive. It's the apocalypse. That's and, right. And Katie and I usually have to reiterate every week that we want to stay as far away from team survival I'm as possible. I'm not saying we want to resort to cannibalism, <laughs> but like if it happens, it happens. I'm like, not saying I like human meat, but you know, I try it. <laughs> Everything wants, right? Everything wants. Well, I am super grateful that you don't have Murphy's freaking powers this week because then you could make everyone do whatever was necessary what is to survive. What's happening yeah. on this show now? <laughs> Did that surprise you guys? That surprise anyone? That yes. surprised me. I literally was staring at the screen going, what? <laughs> because was, and it was very well shot too. That particular scene, um, at you know when he when he's first taking control of poor Janice. Just yeah. that was like, this has just become something completely different than I ever expected the show would go. Because even yeah. when we start seeing Murphy starting to change, I had you know I you you get the idea that maybe he's zombie Jesus, which is kind <laughs> of fun, but or like the zombie Messiah, as right. you put it. But I never thought he would be capable of something like we see in this episode. Yeah. I mean, he does part a sea of zombies. So in some ways, right? it's, it's kind of biblical the stuff he does. He's yeah. like the biggest a hole, and he certainly he certainly thinks he's the Messiah, in, in some ways. So I just when he started like controlling arms, that that caught me so much by surprise because the, first of all, like spitting in her water, like basically trying to zombify her in the moment yeah. it was like dark enough. Yeah, because um, I wasn't sure what that was going to do because we had seen him bite somebody before. Yeah. And we didn't get a chance to see what the long-term effects of that would be. But after that guy died because he was shot, he didn't turn into a zombie. And that was like, well, okay, maybe that, that maybe isn't doesn't necessarily prove anything but maybe that does mean that even though murphy's changing maybe that would be the cure you know it kind of does give you a sense of hope but also a sense of foreboding yeah 
But then when he spit in her water and <laughs> and was able to take control of her like that, that that blew my mind. And I don't I mean, I don't know if Murphy um, knew that was going to happen either. You know, I think that was kind of an experiment uh, for him as well, just to kind of see like what would happen. Yeah. And he's yeah, that's the thing. He's still discovering about the changes that he's going through and about what what kind of powers he has because let's face it at this point it is officially powers yes it is definitely <laughs> he is the worst superhero uh, mankind could ever hope for. yeah I we're mean, definitely scared of him he's super some i think t- time remains to it remains to be told whether you could apply the word hero to him at all anti-hero at best i, I would never say hero I think that's yeah. <laughs> anti-hero at best. But I think he does. Right. But to give Murphy credit, he does save the group several times. You mm-hmm. know, definitely, and he's definitely looking out for them. And he didn't have to, especially at this point when he when he sees that he can take control of people like that. Other people might view the group that he's associated with now as expendable after after a revelation like that. Yeah. But he still looks to get back together with them to make it to California. He likes us. He <laughs> yeah, so they, likes they, us. Yeah, they're, they are still <laughs> his friends. Like, as much as he might see them, as, he might not care that much. Mm-hmm. He still likes these people. He likes, he's selfish, but he still likes having people around who seem to like him, potentially. Yeah, they've, yeah. they've officially deemed him a friend. And so I don't know if he's ever really gotten that kind of validation before. And we saw in the last, or in the zombie, um, nuclear zombie episode that he he's like, he does miss them when they're gone, when they're absent. Yeah, yeah, as he should, as he should. <laughs> well, you know, and I was just thinking that everyone's story has sort of been told, everyone's backstory, except for Murphy. So we don't really know what kind of upbringing or childhood he had. Um, so, I mean, but it's probably easy to guess because he's not a very likable person. Um, so, uh, yeah, I could see why th- he would stick with us, obviously. Yeah, he's still a big question mark. His past and his future are both big question marks. <laughs> yes. The, the question is what happens if they get to California or for whatever reason have to leave him or choose to leave him? And does he like bite them and he's like no zombie powers you will stay <laughs> well it does bring up the question actually i'm gonna go ahead and uh katie sent me a couple texts because she's stuck in an airport right now um, <laughs> actually possibly watching us so hey katie if you're watching <laughs> but um she wanted me since we're talking about it right here at the top of the show she she's like murphy essentially the king of zombies will he be able to rule humanity or something if everyone has a vaccine made from his blood so that's true if like they actually oh. do make the vaccine would he be able to take control of humanity? And what you what you guys were talking about just now, what's to stop him from using this power on his party? You know, it's already kind of a tenuous friendship, so what happens if things go sour? So Interesting. I, that is a good point, that, like, once you start injecting his blood into other people, it's just, like, it's exponential from there. Yeah, he could literally make himself the ruler of humanity, if that was the case. If every single person that's left alive was injected with this vaccine, quote-unquote, and again, this is assuming the vaccine would even work like that, he could very well take control of humanity. That's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or it turns into a thing where once they figure out that that's what it does what it can do what yeah. it can do then who else wants to if they can like separate like re basically remake the vaccine like from this just the science of like analyzing his blood so that it's not him his blood going into it but the same formula you put that into somebody else that can then control their own army and that's maybe season two is like multiple zo- <laughs> it's like multiple zombie armies all under the control of like one guy it's like the it's like a weird dark zombie pokemon master <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch them all i like all these ideas i like all these ideas writers get started <laughs> Well, what would you like to see? For, obviously, we, we don't want any spoilers for the next episode, but what would you like to see from season two? Oh, my gosh. I haven't even thought about that. That's a really good <laughs> question. Um, to be honest, because I do know what happens in episode 13, um, 
Yeah, I'm not actually, to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, not to put me on the spot. I, you know, I'm actually, I don't have any expectations, to be honest with you. Um, but I am really just genuinely fascinated to to see what will happen. I guess, um, yeah, I can't say that because I'm going to give something away. Oh, <laughs> I can't do that either. Um, Next okay. week. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll just say that I would, I'm interested to see what happens with, with 10K, actually. Where, because everyone sort of has a relationship. And, um, yeah, he had kind of a girl interest that he was interested in. And then we haven't seen her. We don't know if she's coming back. So I'd be really interested to see, like, how his story, um, you know. Well, we had Matt on a couple weeks ago. We and did. And, uh, yeah, I, I was completely <laughs> off because I was thinking that Cassandra had more of a crush on 10K than he had on her. <laughs> and it sounds like I was completely wrong on that, that 10K likes Cassandra. I mean, I think it could go both ways, <laughs> you know, Yay. and everyone has an opinion about it. I've heard some people say that, no, Cassandra's way too old for 10K. And then I had someone tell me from Asylum, actually, I was, um, I went in to do some ADR and they said, you know, I was really disappointed that he didn't kiss you at that point. <laughs> and I was like, really? It's like, I'm kind of disappointed too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it kind of goes both ways. I think that definitely 10K was interested in Cassandra in the beginning and she was kind of like not in that um, space because she's running from cannibals. Um, Fair enough. (laughs) Right? (laughs) She had her mind on other things. Um, But, you know, now we've we've gone in through a couple episodes and he's really like looked out for her. He's really watched out for her and protected her. And um, I think that romance aside, whether there is any romance or not, I think that they do have a bond um, with one another. Um, and you know, when they, they're like, they were the last to join the group too. Mm-hmm. So they have a lot in common. They're kind of like the loners. So, you know, like strangers in the night that sort of, <laughs> you know, find each other. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can contribute to this conversation. <laughs> I don't want to make any of 10Ks, you know, fans angry. You know, maybe they don't want him to kiss anybody. He does. He has a lot of fans. I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, he's got like the he's like the cute little innocent looking dude, <laughs> he but totally he's racked up is. like 2,500 kills at this point. Uh, oh my god! This one, yeah, 2,552. Wow, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and he keeps track too. That's the great part is that on the show he's keeping track to make sure that it's you know it's consistent. It's consistent. Yeah. Which um, just kind of I I do want to talk a little bit I I would like some clarification because I know a couple of the episode orders got swapped and I was wondering if this was one of those because when we open up the episode they're in South Park Colorado Mm -hmm. when they were just outside of Salt Lake City like yeah uh like in the previous episode when we had the the kind of female cult so I'm I'm no geography expert. And now you're like putting out I'm thinking about like, oh my god, what's the geography? There? Yeah, and we're Americans, so we're we're bad at geography. <laughs> it's all right. But I'm like it kind of seems like they backtracked if that was the case. I guess I th- well, I feel like we need to pull out a map. I just think it's just north. Sure. Like they went north and if they're going to I can't remember what part of California they're going to, but if it's I would assume it's in Northern California. I mean, and granted, anything can happen on the road in between episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they might have to turn around and go back. You know, um, things are, you know, if the road's blocked or if there's a tsunami, you know, that throws them off course. Anything can happen. Yeah. But it just kind of seemed odd to me that, you know, in the previous episode we were in Utah. We're so close to California. And then to go back to Colorado... To South Park of all things. <laughs> yeah, now map. I feel now I feel bad. I feel like I have to go back and yeah, pull up a map. And, well, and, and, see. and I know that a couple of the episodes got swapped and it makes me wonder if this episode was supposed to be before the one where Mac and Addie where it focused on Mac and Addie. Because but there they is had that been line, separated. Though. There's that line where Cassandra asks um, Warren, you know, do you think we'll ever see them again at the very beginning of mm-hmm. the episode? But this isn't the first time they've been separated from them, so this is I true. could be completely wrong. Oh, I yeah, could that's be... totally backtracking because <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like a long way to backtrack when you're then so I'm, close to I'm California. I'm gonna go with that answer as well, then. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's I'm right. sorry, I don't mean to like kind of nitpick or like no, no, but you're totally right. And actually, I was thinking about that too because because we had filmed it out of order, I was trying to remember. Um, you know, when we did episode 12, 
we hadn't, I think we had like a week or two off um, before we did that episode again, uh, again, before we did the episode. Um, so I was just trying to figure out the order as well. And I'm, I'm totally lost. Well, so you're probably that, right. And it must all just be a giant blur for you because every time we bring, bring everyone in, they always talk about how just quick the process is. It's like you get five and a half days to film something that, you know, in an entire episode. Yeah. And what's the average? Do you guys know? Just for um, the TV viewers out there. I mean, I've worked on shows that go on a six day a lot of hour longs do six days yeah. um, but it really depends this for an action show like this that's a lot to do in a six day it is. show yeah. um, like, when you're yeah. constantly changing locations and all, the characters are always on the run yeah with no mm-hmm. standing sets especially I can't like that's incredible to not do. to mention all the stunts Yes, yeah, stunts, well. <laughs> action, makeup of like you're do- especially like this episode where you had like thirty to fifty zombies. I'm sure like yeah. spread out across the episode because um, you have to have all the ones at the plant, at the medical facility, all the ones at the country club, and each one of those yeah. has to be individually done up. Yeah. Um. And it, yeah. So six days, I think, is normal, is, but yeah, I've, not I've heard, but for a show like this. No, no, I've heard it's seven to eight days. I, um, but yeah, five, five to six is is not very much. And so, yes, you're right. It, it is. It was. It is still a blur. <laughs> Where am I? What? <laughs> it's okay. The zombie apocalypse is over. What in California. Day? You're in California. You made it. <laughs> that was. That's the real destination. They just like that, the 13th episode. They just like end it and they come into the AfterBuzz TV studio. <laughs> and we're like, with that. we can't help you. We don't know anything about what? vaccines. <laughs> They would have to literally drive through the fourth wall for that. <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. We've got some stunt guys and some makeup people that can make that happen. Which uh, you had a pretty good uh, zombie kill. That, you know, essentially a one-handed zombie kill in this episode. Because when when Brett and Henry and Janice jerks, by the way, uh, when yes. they kidnap Murphy and they leave the crew all handcuffed together, which I don't know why you wouldn't just shoot them, but they leave them handcuffed together to a zombie. Like, and you had to, like, grab that umbrella and kill it one-handed. Yes. I'm just going to say right now, that was not fun. I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you. Well, yeah, um, you're chained to your entire cast. Yeah, it was, um, you know, and then because I think, like, Nat's, Nat's arm, our, our hands were um, cuffed right here. And so we had together had to control it. And so they were like, who's controlling the umbrella? And so I'm like, Nat, and Nat's like, Pase. <laughs> so they're both kind of like pointing at each other. And he had, and he doesn't weigh a ton, but neither do I. And so he had all of his body weight on me. Um, so I'm just thankful that that, that shot came <laughs> out and that it looked good. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, one of those not fun moments, you know. Like, oh, I can't wait for the shot to be over, <laughs> you know. Like bathroom break. <laughs> Sorry, you're handcuffed. Yeah. To that guy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but it was. Um, yeah, it came out really good. I thought so too. Yeah. Again, I don't know why they wouldn't just shoot them, but <laughs> I thought about that, you know, and I think that. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's still, even though it's the apocalypse, I think it's still hard to just point blank kill people. You yeah, know? and I... and like you can technically say that you know you didn't murder anybody if you didn't actually pull the trigger. And they did exactly. handcuff the zombie to another pole, so it wasn't like they were like, "Hey, it's not like we just you know let a rabid zombie go right. and eat them. We yeah. we just made sure they stayed put." Yeah, totally. Yeah, we've got a soul. We've got a heart, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, I imagine people go through a lot during the apocalypse. So um, whatever way that you can argue yourself out of that guilt of like, I didn't murder, that, murder them. That happened in, um, in uh, God, the one with, uh, I've gone a blank. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's the all, all women. The all women's cult. Oh, yeah, last you know? week, Sisters of Mercy. Yeah, Sisters yeah. of Mercy. Thank you. Um, where they handcuffed the guy as well, right? They didn't shoot him point blank. Yeah, it was well, kind of. Well, they shot the one yeah. guy. <laughs> and then. And then they left the other two for dead. Yeah. And and it was kind of, it was an odd parallel to see that in the previous episode and then to see it again, only this time our heroes are the ones that are chained together. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that that was that was a very very unsettling echo from the previous episode. I would love to see how they pin down that zombie to get a handcuff <laughs> on him while also getting the other's handcuff. Well, he drank the wine too and got knocked out. I'm just I'm just I'm guessing here. Hey, hey zombie. Well, we've seen in we've seen in previous episodes that zombies can get high. And uh, so we know from this episode that they can get drugged up on all sorts of other things. That's we right. know that uh, certain parts of zombies are still <laughs> functional, <laughs> according to this episode. <laughs> we can go ahead and say it. The it, um, the the Viagra zombies. zombies. It yeah. implies. You know what? There's some signs that that implies, though. <laughs> it, it suggests that zombies still have blood flow of some sort. Yeah. Or, or that there's something on some chemical level that, you know, the blood in the zombie system. Well, because that's other, how else would a zombie be able to get high? No, no, totally. Uh, yeah, you're right. I'm just, I'm sorry, Viagra zombie. I can't get this image out no, of my <laughs> Because it, it paints a very specific image yeah. in your brain because of all these zombies that are running around and shambling around this pharmaceutical it's complex. Dangerous. <laughs> it's very it's very dangerous and it's Russell had all these ideas he was very disappointed he was like man you can't talk about Viagra zombies and not show them you've got to show <laughs> the Viagra zombie you know even if it means war and cutting something off and I'm like oh no oh, oh boy no. <laughs> no. it would I, I was almost, I was actually kind of surprised that they, I mean, I, I know why they didn't. Right. But I was almost surprised that they didn't. <laughs> I'm sure somebody wanted to very badly, but yes. Uh, who was it that tweeted, um, oh, uh, Mac? Uh, Michael. Michael, thank mm. you. I was, I had the same problem. my head was like, because they're so close. I'm like, that, am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, but Michael, he tweeted, he's like, Zomboners. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's I was so like, good. yeah, that's what they are. Yep. And I hadn't even watched the episode yet when I saw that tweet. You just knew. <laughs> but I saw his well, I saw his tweet and then I had to watch today just because of all the travel over Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> that must be yeah, that must be a really odd tweet to see out of context. And then you actually watch the episode and you're like, oh, there uh -huh. it is. I mean, yeah. having watched this show for a season now, I'm like <laughs> All right, yeah, I can see that they're going to do that. I can, I can buy it. I love it. I love it. I love that they're kind of just game for anything, you know? Yeah, no, that's true. The show is throwing literally everything at us that I didn't expect because at the beginning of the show, I was just like, okay, it's a zombie road trip series. That, And I thought it was as straightforward as that. I had no <laughs> idea we were going to have an episode about zombie boners. No, we can't keep things straightforward. In like fairness, that. it wasn't an episode. It was like yes, two, thank you. two, two That's scenes a worth of jokes. <laughs> show it no i would have been totally behind a whole episode <laughs> but i'm bump yep. <laughs> that would have made for a very interesting after show <laughs> at least you know now they kind of know what people's reactions to it are and so who knows we might run into zombie zomboners <laughs> again well, we never made it to vegas that's right <laughs> you know what we didn't have a vegas zombie episode Something maybe, tells me we could have one. Maybe that's what happened. They tried to go through Vegas to get there, but there's just too many. It's just a big city, so it just was overrun. So far, the back, you know, so overrun back. that you have to go back several states. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Yes, that is my theory. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with that. But, um, but I, I, I mean, it's silly, but that's kind of a good thing, too, because that's another thing that separates this show from a lot of other zombie material out right now yeah. is that sense of humor. And especially after having some of the really dark stuff that we had and losing two of our main characters in the mm. previous episode. It's nice to have a little a little bit of levity with that, with yeah. zombie boners. <laughs> yeah, well, the first thing I tweeted was like, you're never going to see fast zombies or Viagra zombies on the Walking Dead was just like put it out there, you know. Um, so I kind of just, yeah, I just I love it. I love it. I love that they're throwing stuff out there that people don't expect, and I think that people are responding to it as well because it's not, you know. I mean, gosh, it's the apocalypse. It can get really sad. You need something to lighten it up. It's you know? not like look. I mean, the the, the comparisons are inevitable. Yes. they have to happen because yeah. Walking Dead was the first big zombie show, right. but like. How many medical shows and cop shows do you have? Like we exactly. talk about that. It's like 
it, this is a starting point. Yeah. Like that from there, you have to make it different. You have to make it unique because any, uh, there's a reason that I don't watch a lot of medical shows because there's a few that I really like, but overall they get really repetitive. So mm-hmm. you have to make them different. The Walking Dead, you can only cry about zombies for so <laughs> long before you're like, somebody do something ridiculous. <laughs> like, and this is the fun part of zombies. Like, zombies are ridiculous. They yeah. should be ridiculous. You should have radioactive zombies. <laughs> zombies with boners. And <laughs> I was going to say, and how do you make it different? <laughs> zombies with boners, folks. <laughs> Well, and I call it out. (laughs) And I do like what you said, just from a kind of a story standpoint about the science behind it. That you know these drugs actually do have a physical effect on the zombies. That you can give them Ritalin and they'll run around like crazy. crazy. That you can give them speed and they'll become fast zombies. That you can give them Viagra and something will happen. It's 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 very interesting to note that actual chemical changes will happen that makes me wonder if we're going to see like maybe in future seasons down the road if we're going to see like experiments on zombies like maybe they get to the compound in california and they're able to actually kind of wrangle a couple in for some scientific experiments and maybe that's how murphy gets to be you know gets to control his own little posse of zombies that would be cool he would love that (laughs) man that's gonna be so much fun like when he has just like a little army (laughs) his disposal and he's like making them like wave (laughs) (laughs) he's doing you know simon says i don't think he'll make them wave i I have a feeling he'll make them do some other fun stuff knowing knowing murphy that's where it starts like when he has like 10 (laughs) people he starts he's like testing it it's like can i do it with everyone and then they all in unison just like wave and then he like i thought you were high hitler for some reason (laughs) i was like well have you ever seen a movie called dead snow nazi zombies Really? <laughs> but see, Murphy would do that. Like that's like the next step he would take. He'd he make would. him do, like, make him ev- give everybody the finger, and then he like <laughs> make them do some inappropriate gestures of you know some him other so kind. Well. <laughs> you know him so well. You know so well. Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, Before we go on with the episode, I want to talk to you guys really quickly about iTunes. Folks, thank you so, so much for everyone who goes to iTunes to rate and leave a comment. It really means the world to us when when you say what you think of the show. It's the best way to let our bosses know that you like the Z Nation after show that we're putting on for you. The people at AfterBuzz put on over 80 hours of free content a week for you. Yeah free oh i said it <laughs> i'll say it again free and that means the people <laughs> behind the scenes come in on holiday weekends to come and give you this content for free so they they rock the the people behind the scenes and they work so too. hard thank you steve lemieux uh from the booth yeah for I sure i was in vacation <laughs> <laughs> so we- i didn't come in <laughs> 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 Never He's mind. transmitting this message from afar. <laughs> but it really does mean the world to us when you guys go to iTunes, rate, leave a comment. It doesn't take very much time. We also love reading the comments on YouTube. So thank you so much for the continued support. You guys are the best. So, yay. Awesome. Honest- huzzah. Huzzah, yay. <laughs> what does huzzah mean? I'm so it's mad. like woo. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, You're like, you know what huzzah means? I'm like, I don't know. It's Woo-hoo! just a word. It's like... Yeah, it's the gig yay. There's not a... Yay! It's like that. But um, I do want to talk about something else, too. Um, We don't get a whole lot from Citizen Z in this episode, but what is kind of interesting about his portion of the story as it's intertwined with trying to get Murphy back is his search for Dr. Murch, the Mm -hmm. doctor who came up with the vaccine that Murphy's been injected with. It's kind of... Like, her story is kind of interesting because she disappeared... A few years before the zombie, like, apocalypse happened, magically pops up right on the day when everything terrible is going down and Murphy gets injected with the virus, gets put on a plane to a fort in Colorado and then goes completely dark after that. So we don't know what's happened to her ever since. She never showed, like, we don't know if she made it to California and if she's at the facility there. We don't know if she's still en route. We don't know if she decided to stay in Colorado. Um, We don't know if she's dead. We don't know anything about who this lady was before the zombie apocalypse and where she is now. And that's really interesting. And also, again, it's just kind of unsettling because she's probably the only person who can explain what's happening to Murphy right now. 
And so her being a complete mystery and being absent and possibly dead, that raises a lot of questions about what to do. I'm just going to ask it. Do we think she's to blame? For the zombie apocalypse? For every, yeah, for everything. Do I have to answer that question? No. Okay, good. We, we... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, feel free to speculate. If you I, do I know. have to assume just the fact they're <laughs> dropping this on our like penultimate episode that like the information is coming. Yeah. And At least something about it. It totally is. is. Yeah. yeah. Katie's wondering say... that too. She sent me another text about yeah. that one. She's <laughs> she's wondering the same thing. Is this the cause of the zombie apocalypse? I, man, you guys are on it. I think that some of these questions will be answered in episode 13. I think that's a fair guess then. Like now, now uh, <laughs> we're not going to pry answers out of you. Don't worry. But I really like that theory that she's the one responsible. Because it makes it once we get to her, like, if she's experimenting with stuff, causes this outbreak, she would have the necessary research to then potentially create a vaccine. Um, yeah, and in in this, you know, with with zombie lore, there are a number of um, there are a number of causes of the zombie apocalypse. Sometimes, like if you're like 28 days later, it's like mm-hmm. some form of rabies or right. like mad cow disease, things like that. Um, a lot of times, it crops up as diseases. Other times it crops up as some sort of experiment that went wrong. And it would be very easy to see that being the result of, you know, this zombie apocalypse in this world being the result because because there is a lot going on scientifically with the zombies. Like we see nuclear zombies. We see chemicals, <laughs> you know, being added to zombies to make them to change the way they behave, which is also kind of interesting too, that you can modify the behavior of a zombie with chemical drugs. That's kind of cool. I mean, you can turn them into a weapon. So like, was that the original intent was that you could turn a population effectively against itself. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in a biologic, if you're in a war and you need to, the, the to defeat an enemy that's like entrenched or something, you get one zombie loose. You can. You, we've seen how devastating that is. Suddenly, from with their their enemy is now within the walls, only just causing more and more problems exponentially. So it's a great way to wage war with very very little that you have to do. Yeah. No, all you have to do is inject one person, and there it goes. It's a very very terrible form of like biological warfare. If that's one the case. person. Or a bear, whatever you want. <laughs> That's true, because the zombie virus affects more than just humans. Or a bear, why not? <laughs> why not a bear? Why not a camel? I don't know. Our host, Roya, was very excited for the bear. <laughs> the zombie bear. <clears throat> a lot of people were. I was excited about the zombie bear. Yeah. Zombie bear, for what sure. What kind of animals would you guys like to see zombified in the show? Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. I did. <laughs> a giraffe. Because he would be so oh awkward. <laughs> That'd also so be really hard to kill because the head's so far up. <laughs> so high. <laughs> you can't it's like you're swinging there. a Z-whack. Yeah. You're, you're like, ugh. Which is, and ugh. that's the thing. It'd be so easy to bite because his head's all the way up there, but his legs are down here. So he wouldn't really be able to protect himself. You know well. what I'd like to see? A capoeira. Zombie capoeira, <laughs> which is like essentially an ostrich, but like, evil and mean <laughs> I thought ostrich while we're already evil and mean it, like that even more so like I think these ones like kick or something oh, man, like there's that there's so many funny animals that could be <laughs> zombie sloths that like slowly make their way oh my god you. can we have writers if you're listening next season <laughs> I want a trip to the zombie zoo Oh my gosh, that would be so great. Oh, that's a good one. I like the idea of like zombie celebrities. Ever since, oh. you know, um, what was that one that one movie with uh, Bill Murray? Z- uh, Zombieland. Zombieland. Zombie yeah, yeah. I want to, who would you guys want to see as zombies celebrity wise? Oh gosh. Maria <laughs> Menounos. <laughs> <laughs> who aren't already zombies. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Uh, I Mike would... Tyson, he already bites people. There you go. <laughs> oh, he's the original zombie. Uh, Mike Tyson is patient zero. Katie just texted me. She says bees. She wants zombies. Zombies. Which, uh, boo, Katie. I'm booing you all the way from the studio. How dare you make a pun? 
Is she, so is she watching? She must be watching this. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's awesome. We're watching. Uh, we're on the live stream at AfterBuzzTV.com. Yeah, no, I mean that's what I. <laughs> what, what I want to see is like so, zombies just take over the AfterBuzz TV studios, <laughs> and Maria's just hanging out here, <laughs> and our team finds this this place just overrun. Next season on Z Nation. <laughs> I'd love it. That would be awesome. <laughs> I, you know, if we had the um, extras that we had in Spokane playing the zombies, they would definitely be here. They were so committed, so committed. Yeah, I, I have, I've heard nothing but awesome things about all of the extras. Uh, that yeah. they're just so enthusiastic and just so happy and passionate about the work that they're doing, and that they get to be included in this yeah. fun show. I couldn't believe it. They were telling us, like, you know, we placed a cup somewhere they'd be like you had the cup here and then you're facing this way and I was like thank you (laughs) (laughs) who are you (laughs) no they were just awesome you know in the weather we were doing it in the summertime so it wasn't comfortable there were days where it was like 90 100 degrees there were days where we'd have storms thunderstorms and uh what do you it's not called haze what is that called why am I going fog not fog either like Work overcast play. smog no not smog <laughs> <laughs> no, it, that's what you have it's like in a LA it's snow and it's not... a ball but it's not um hail hail oh, oh. hail <laughs> English is my first language I swear hail um, could be really effective against a zombie horde you just have big like tennis ball size it's like things also really on effective on expensive cameras so we had Good. to stop shooting Good point but Ugh. no they were just great they are great no matter what the weather was so well speaking of like little small things to you know go right through a zombie's head i can i uh, one of my favorite zombie kills in this episode was the golf balls with the slingshots yeah <laughs> that teamwork was so great you're like here's the ball and he just shoots it and it's so it was so funny bart simpson killed them <laughs> i wanted to say the line your balls but they wouldn't let me <laughs> i don't know why I mean, you can have Viagra zombies, but you can't just say your balls. They're like one joke at a time, please. Okay. There's enough zombie sex jokes in one episode. I guess there's a quota. <laughs> the, yeah, there is a quota. Like there's a quota, of, like how much you can swear as mm-hmm. well, which I didn't realize. But you know, they'd always have to tell us all the time. You guys can't say shit again. Well, now we can't. Well, you know what? Uh, Warren said it in the episode. So, um, well, you know, you can say it. You just, there's a certain, there's a certain limit. Yeah. Yeah. Sci fi has their limits, you know. Which actually, it did surprise me when she, when she dropped that word. I was like, oh, I I forget sometimes that those certain things are allowed. And still, they can do whatever they want. (laughs) It's, it's paid cable. That's true. I'm still just not quite used to hearing it like on, you know, something that I would watch at eight o'clock at night. And here I am. I've heard it like all the time on set. So I, I was I was surprised I didn't hear it more when I was watching the episode. You're like, oh, it's only just the once. It's so funny. It's weird because we were saying that all the time. The editors are like, yeah, I know. You said it so much. We had to cut so many lines out. Sorry. Well, oh, gosh. The, with this episode, you know, we, we, we talked about citizency. We talked about Murphy's new new powers and everything like that. I, I do want to talk about the, the scene where they all come back together when they, they've tracked down Murphy and they, they, they were able to find him. And we, we have... We have Janice get, getting killed because it was her husband and right. she couldn't pull the trigger. And we have Henry getting killed just because he was a jerk. <laughs> that, that, that was about it. He was just kind of a jerk. And then we have, you know, this kind of the, the climax where Brett has Murphy at gunpoint. And, like, just watching the, this go down because Murphy had bit him earlier in the episode. And just watching this go down because, like... And to see Murphy take control, but not say anything to the rest of them, and just kind of walk down as he makes this guy shoots himself in the head, like that was pretty dark. I mean, I I don't know what else you would do in that situation because I mean, this is a guy who literally has you at gunpoint, so I don't know what else you can do. But he he like if Murphy had wanted to, he could make that guy just go and walk away and walk until he couldn't walk anymore, or was out of range or whatever. That would have not been any fun. No, it would. <laughs> no, no. This was definitely better. It was definitely yeah. darker. But um, 
somebody brought up a couple of weeks ago um, just that, you know, Murphy does some stuff and we'll, we'll see him go darker and darker as the series progresses. And this was definitely dark. I think we've definitely seen Murphy not save people. Mm-hmm. I think this is the first time we've seen him kill anyone. Yeah, for sure. And that was that shot, I think, was one of the last shots of the day of the very last episode. And um, it was it was pretty powerful, both to watch Murphy and the other actor, keeping the other actor, you know, do that like mind power struggle and then to hear the gun go off. Um, I think, yeah, we were all sort of like, holy. (laughs) (laughs) Without having to say that word again. Um, Yeah, he goes really dark. And I think that when that happens, I think that that really changes his relationship with us. It's like, does, do, does he need us anymore? You know, and, and do we feel safe to be around him at this point? Um, because it, it, he's obviously capable of, of anything. Yeah, and you guys weren't let in on, on what had happened. You no, know, not to, at all. to you guys, it looks like Murphy just talked a guy into shooting himself in the head. And where, whereas, you know, something was clearly wrong, something was clearly up. Because, you know, you can see it in the guy's eyes and his performance because he doesn't know quite know what's happening. Yeah. He um, does say something, though. I forgot what it was, but something like, get out of my head, I think. I don't recall him saying that if he if he did, but I, I was just, I wasn't sure if anything had been, like, given to them as to what actually happened. Like, that it was actually Murphy pulling the trigger and not that guy. Yeah, I don't think any, I think, I don't think the team knows at this point that he can do that yet and i guess that's going to be a big revelation once they find out they know that's so weird because i thought oh gosh and i feel bad maybe i got it all wrong but i thought that warren said you know when after he shoots the guy after the guy shoots himself um murphy what'd you do and he said nothing so i I think think there's some sort of yeah yeah. i think they're aware that there's something up going on yeah they don't understand because who would guess who would guess that murphy somehow has the power to control people when he bites them (laughs) 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 he's kind of like a vampire almost (laughs) yeah zombampire zompire zompire (laughs) zombie A Vambi. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that. <laughs> Coming to sci-fi this Season fall. five on Z Nation. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, we that basically wraps it up for, for this episode. Oh gosh, that was fast. It was. I mean, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> Steven, do we have a couple more minutes, though? If you need them. Sure. Let's take a couple more minutes just to talk to you about what it's like to, to play Cassandra on, on the show. It's so much fun. How did you initially get um, involved with this show? Um, well, my, you know, I'm from Seattle originally, and it was a really, really big deal to have a TV show like this come to Seattle. I think, like, the last time we had anything filmed there was, um, I don't even remember. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> See, that's how long ago it was. I think you said Grimm films up there, right? Well, it was Portland. Gr- Grimm's in Portland. Yeah, yeah, what's that show, North um, Northern Exposure? Oh, Do you okay. guys remember that? Like, <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> See? This is what I'm saying. So, uh, literally, I get an email from my agent saying, you have an audition at this time. Be there. Don't F it up. <laughs> and, you know, there wasn't, like, normally she'll call and say, hey, I've got an audition for this. Are you interested? Are you available? There was a none of that. It was like, I don't care who you are, where you are, you're going in for this audition, whether I think you're a good actor or not, you're going in because we just had no idea what they were looking for. So that's kind of the beginning of of that. How much did you know, like when you started auditioning and then when you got cast about Cassandra and like what her story was going to be? I had a, f- I knew that she, I did know that she was running from cannibals. Um, but that was really about it. I didn't know much else about her. Um, but I think I was able to sort of figure things out based off what the other characters were like. Um, I did figure that she was kind of like a loner and sort of a mysterious one and that her, you know, that she, her backstory was a little bit shrouded just from knowing what, like, the other characters' relationship. But um, other, I mean, I guess I even heard she was supposed to be a gypsy at one point. Hmm. Um, <laughs> From your reaction, I'm glad they did not go that way. Um, yeah, but not not a whole lot. Yeah. 
Well, over the course of the season, we've seen her come out of her shell quite a bit because she goes from not saying anything about herself, you know, to the point of murdering someone to keep a secret and also to not be taken back yeah. um, to actually genuinely making connections with the people around her coming out of her shell and being able to be a team player. Um, how's that been like just kind of playing, you know, kind of some playing somebody who has to come out of their shell a little bit more now? Um, well, I'm really shy. I don't know if you guys can tell. So it wasn't really far enough. Um, you know, it felt like because I wasn't, because I really didn't know any of these people, it was sort of a really natural progression, you know, um, of coming out of my shell as we filmed more and more episodes. So it felt really um, pretty natural, actually. Um, you know, it was my, it's my first TV show. So I like Cassandra, I showed up and I didn't say anything. It was really <laughs> quiet and kind of just like method scared actor. that someone was going to find me out, you know. <laughs> Speaking of method, I actually, um, you know, you don't really see it much in this episode, but Cassandra has a limp. And she had a limp from the Sisters of Mercy episode. And I thought it'd be a really great idea to wear, to put a rock in my shoe. Like, you know, really go method on it, like you nice. were saying. Little did I know that we would be shooting Cassandra <laughs> with that, with like for three weeks. Oh, so no. after like the second week, I was like, I'm never going method again. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, I didn't even notice that. But there was um, there was a bandage on her leg. So my theory about the the episodes being out of order is completely wrong. Just no, like we're it. just, yeah, we're just backtracking. We're going to drive around. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're shy. We don't really want to get to California yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, and she's bleeding quite a bit. Something happens at the end of episode one of, of, of uh, at the end of episode 12, where she gets injured, she re-injures her, um, her leg. So she's bleeding a lot. Probably running away. <laughs> <laughs> running. <laughs> yes, for sure. It's definitely not a bite, thankfully. Um, yeah. Now... We've seen a lot of really cool, like, zombie kills this season. It's, like, just the number of zombies that we get and the, the types of kills that we get are always really funny and really impressive. What's been your favorite zombie kill so far? My favorite zombie kill um, is, dang it, it's that, is the one where, the one in the uh, honey bucket. I have to the say, do you know what I'm talking about at the foo bar? Oh, at the foo bar, <laughs> where he yes. comes out <laughs> and his pants are down. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was funny when we were rehearsing it. It was funny when we shot it. It was funny when I watched it. <laughs> um, so I think that's gonna have to be my favorite. I mean, even though it wasn't technically my zombie kill, it was it was still a good one. Oh no, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um. What, what's been your favorite type of zombie then that we've seen? Because we've seen radioactives, we've seen bear oh, zombies. Come on, Viagra zombies all the way. <laughs> Viagra zombies all the way. For sure. For the win. Yeah. <laughs> And obviously, we don't we don't want you to give anything away for what's going to happen in the next episode and everything like that. But um, out of the out of the, your cast members that you that you've gotten to play off of, is there anybody that you have that you kind of wish you had more scenes with that you would like to play off of more, like fun fun mm. character interaction stuff? Gosh, I think uh, it would have been fun to do something with Mac. They they sort so. After the cannibal episode, um, they, we, they were kind of playing with this idea of like Addie and Cassandra having sort of something going on between the two of them <laughs> as his eyes light up. <laughs> oh, do I have your attention now, do I? Yes. Um, so I thought it might be fun, you know, if they had gone with that storyline, if um, Cassandra and, and Mac kind of got into it because they're both pretty fierce people. Um, and I remember actually there was that first episode where I kind of choke him mm -hmm. um, when, when he finds me in the cage. And I literally did co co uh, choke him and I felt so bad. Um, but he had choked me <laughs> in episode three and we shot those out of order. So he's like, don't worry about it. We're even. <laughs> like, yes, we are. There we go. We're all square now. Yeah. Okay. In well a dark, twisted way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't have to feel bad about it, is what he was saying. 
no, he was so sweet. He's like, can I take you out for a drink or something? And I'm like, no, I'm going to go home and ice this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't well, that bad. Wasn't well, that and that's got to be tough when you're working on a show where it is so physical. And yeah, there are stunt people, but, you know, you could still end up getting hurt. Yeah, absolutely. Has anybody gotten hurt on the set before? Because, again, it, things just go so fast. I'm the only one. <laughs> I, oh, I feel like such a wimp. Um, And it was like something really like minute, like I didn't stretch before sprinting. Um, no, that's a lie. Someone ran and fell, but I'm not gonna say who. <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Um, but yeah, I, I went to go sprint to go run really um, fast. Um, this is the, the episode where we're in the cult. Mm -hmm. um, and I just didn't stretch and I s strained my, my back thigh. You don't want to, it's too much information. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. Um, but other than that, no, not any major injuries that okay yeah, that's good be safe <laughs> yes absolutely yeah and our stunt um our stunt coordinator alex was just amazing he's right there to make sure everyone was you know now safe. if given the opportunity do you guys like to do your own stunts or do you guys kind of prefer to just kind of leave that to the to the to the actual stunt band um well i don't think like for me i can only speak for myself but cassandra didn't have to do anything too crazy um so I, I do like to do my own stunts. I think that that's really fun. Um, but there was one scene where I think Mac and Addie had to like drive a motorcycle or ride a motorcycle. And, you know, I don't think that would have been safe. If you don't yeah. ride a motorcycle, then you better leave it to the stunt guys. No, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to like be rolling her along and just topple over. <laughs> no, no, that would have been really bad. Yeah, if you've, yeah. I, I've fallen on a motorcycle before, so you I know. Have? Mm -hmm. Just in the dirt, it was no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It wasn't going very fast, it was fine. But yeah, you definitely don't want to do that on the asphalt. No. That's terrible. <laughs> no, I, oh, I've seen pictures, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, no, it's terrible. Well, that basically wraps it up for the time we have this week. Zach, do you have any other questions for our awesome guests? Oh, uh, no. You've been fantastic. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Thank you, guys. You guys have been amazing. Oh, no. It was such a pleasure having you. Any final thoughts on this week's episode? I can't wait for the finale. I can't wait for the finale. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Murphy take control of actual zombies and give himself a zombie <laughs> army. That's what I want. That's on your Christmas wish list. That would be a wonderful Christmas present. Sci-fi, <laughs> <Can you please? laughs> Anyway, Zach Wilson. Oh, actually, no. To say, where can the people go if they want to find out more about you and about what you do? Um, I am on Twitter, so just at the say pal is my. I don't even know what that's called. See how old I am. What is your that Twitter called? handle? My Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can find me at the say pal. Nice. Zach Wilson. And you guys catch me on Twitter at that Zach Wilson. T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. And also here at After Buzz, tons of shows. Agents of Shield with Miss Maggie Salinas over here. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, Grim, tons of stuff. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And you can follow Roya at Hey Roya. That's H E Y R O Y A. And you can follow Katie at Kiaje. That's K I A X E T. Yes, I did it. Fancy. <laughs> and you can follow me on Twitter at The Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. <laughs> I'm also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz. So, again, Pase, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for awesome. tuning in. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After Shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.